just recently did you get a feeling that there was something you had done some time back but you need to do it again or something which you had done long 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 time back you need to do it again or you have done it and you are happy but you want to refine it more and do you get a feeling sometimes that one day the people with whom i used to sit and dance and enjoy have fun play hopefully one day i will do that again with them once upon a time yes in the near in the near future do you get such feelings well if you get such feelings and if you also feel that you have something inside you which you need to share with somebody else and you also need to understand their viewpoint and you also need to understand why did they do this putting yourself in the shoes of other people trying to understand others trying to forgive others trying to learn from them and trying to explain them why you did things and understand why they did things well then you are at the right place so today we are going to discuss about the transit of rahu which is going to happen in the nakshatra of punarvasu from january to september all right 3rd january around and 12th september around that's the approximate date so if you are new then like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation go to my website below and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so now rahu is currently transiting in the nakshatra of pushya which is inside cancer and the first charan of nakshatras which comes that's the fourth pada of punarvasu in cancer okay and as we know rahu always moves retrograde so it is now going to enter punarvasu nakshatra well before understanding what rahu will do in punarvasu we need to understand the energy of pushya and punarvasu all right see the nakshatras are very peculiar some of the nakshatras i mean they will obviously have a uh, planets which gets exalted there so we all know which is the planet that gets exalted in the fourth pada of punarvasu which falls in cancer yes you guessed it right it's jupiter jupiter gets exalted from 0 to 5 degrees in the sign of cancer and first Char- the fourth charan of punarvasu falls uh, in cancer cancer begins with that and then when it goes to the first pada of pushya nakshatra it finds the peak exaltation in 5 degrees so now the question is what is the difference between punarvasu and pushya well what is punarvasu first of all because if you do not understand punarvasu then you cannot understand why jupiter gets exalted there and if you don't understand that then you cannot understand why it gets exalted at its peak in pushya so punarvasu nakshatra ignoring all the other details has this ability to comprehend knowledge and punarvasu has this ability to share whatever we have with us so when jupiter enters into this nakshatra in cancer it selflessly shares knowledge with everybody and it also receives knowledge and cancer is the original fourth house cancer shows emotions now moon is the planet which is related to bhakti which is what surrender to god so whoever has jupiter placed in cancer it is to be understood that as lord krishna says in the gita bhakti mayam param kritva you can attain me very easily through the process of bhakti yoga So Krishna says that the, that's the culmination of all the yogic processes, which leads to bhakti yoga finally. That when you emotionally try to connect with God, not like a pre-con, where we just do things officially, like it happens in countries like India, especially from where I am. Oh, mother is telling my dear daughter, please come and sit in the puja. Father is telling my dear son, please go and. bring this pandit he will do this he will do that yes that's what spirituality is in many places sometimes in many homes so there are many people who will just do official practices of spirituality and then they will complain that oh we do not get any results but 
Lord Krishna says in the Gita, this kind of practice, which is like a Jupiter, which is in Capricorn, because Capricorn is a lifeless, dead, barren sign where there is no emotion, there is no feeling. It's the original 10th house where you do things in the office even if you don't like. But Cancer is the 4th house, which is the home where you are at peace because they say home is where the heart is. It may not be the place where you are born or where your mother stays or your father stays. It can be any place where you feel at ease. It can be any place. It can be your friend's place. It can also be your office sometimes. <laughs> so, when Jupiter is in Cancer, it is to be understood that we have uh, practiced spirituality to such a level that now we can emotionally involve with it. And that is the place where Jupiter gets exalted. And now within the first three degrees, there is the nakshatra of Punarvasu, the fourth charan. So the fourth charan of Punarvasu is very interesting. During Punarvasu nakshatra, what happens is, whatever we have, we share it with others. And then whatever they have, the knowledge that they share with us. So there is a great exchange of knowledge. And Jupiter, as we know, he is the original guru. So this, this shows a beautiful relationship with our gurus and our disciples. So then when Jupiter moves into Pushya, he finds the highest level of exaltation. Why? Because in Pushya, even the desire to get knowledge or to receive that knowledge back, which is still there in Punarvasu to some extent, is not there. Pushya is a very selfless nakshatra. It represents the breasts of a lady. So that's the breast of the mother, basically. So the mother is uh, feeding the child. She's not thinking that, oh, maybe the child will be this or that, or when he grows up, will he take care of me? The mother is not thinking of all those things. So when Jupiter enters Pushya, the first pada, in Navamsha, it goes to Leo, of course. And uh, here in first pada of Pushya, he finds great happiness because he can selflessly give out knowledge without expecting anything in return and then because Pusha is also one of the most prosperous nakshatras of the uh, zodiac so there's a lot of goodness there's a lot of forgiveness all these traits are there within Pusha. now well now you may be thinking uh, this video was on rahu transit into punarva so why am i speaking on jupiter <laughs> because we have to understand that whenever there is a transit of a particular planet in a particular zodiac sign and in a particular nakshatra that planet gets the flavors of the planet which gets exalted there. So now it's like saying that Rahu can have the tendency to behave like Jupiter. So what is Rahu basically? Rahu in a way represents our pending karma, those things which we must do in this life. And wherever Rahu transits, those themes of our life, they have very strong past life connections. So now when Rahu transits from Pushya back to Punarvasu, then it can happen wherever the sign Cancer and Gemini is falling. So wherever these two signs are falling, it can happen that you will end up doing things again, which you had done once upon a time, but you thought that it was good, it was great, it was fantastic, I closed the chapter, I had closed, but now due to some reason, which will depend on your horoscope, your dasha and what planets are there in your birth chart, which are the planets which are in Punarvasu in your birth chart. If you have a planet in Punarvasu, then themes related to that planet will come to the surface again. You will do those things again because Punarvasu shows return of the light, which means there is something from the past which is coming back now, which is surfacing in the present. Because of which, you are now taking a deeper look at things. And Punarvasu is also having a lot of link with uh, the mother, as they say, the Divine Mother. So because of which, now is the opportunity that if somebody had done anything wrong to us, we forgive that person. And if we had done anything wrong with somebody or anybody, which is very likely these days in Kali Yuga, so we can also forgive that person. In fact, we can only message that person that, hey, look, you did this to me. I remember, but I forgive you. 
and we can also say to that person whatever wrong i did to you please forgive me also generally when people ask forgiveness they will always say things like if i have done anything wrong please forgive me well that can show a subtle entitlement complex that i can never do anything wrong that can happen sometimes so instead of writing that if i had done something wrong with you then please forgive me if you were hurt please forgive me we can directly write please forgive me for the things that i said and it hurt you <laughs> now the other person may show ego sometimes the other person may say oh i am not going to forget you well then that is his free will now the interesting thing is they say that whatever you used to do once upon a time on a daily basis those things become relevant during punarvasu nakshatra but many people don't know this that whatever you do during punarvasu also gets reinstantiated into your daily life again and again so this means that whatever you do from january till september because rahu will again come back to punarvasu when after 18 years because rahu takes 18 years rahu ketu a bit more than 18 year near about that time so it's like saying rahu which is the karmic planet of our desires and our inclinations and our materialistic desires that planet is now going into a system where see it's like artificial intelligence because i am from machine learning that domain so i can speak a bit on this what where what we do is we train the system okay see so you have seen 10 things here 10 things there so now if you see something similar you predict that because i have seen it there i have seen it here maybe it's like this this is just an example in layman's terms so now what actually we will do is we will reconsciously program our desires so two things are going to happen is one is our destiny so destiny means depending on wherever cancer and gemini is falling and depending on the planets which are there in punarvasu in your original birth chart things from the past will come back those things we will have to replay once again but the free will is there so the, using the free will we can now reprogram our conscious mind where we will set the tone for the next 18 years of a rahu transit so now is a very good time to visit holy places to visit spiritual centers to visit ashrams monasteries to meet our gurus and to do daily practices of mantra and reading the scriptures especially scriptures like the gita and the shrimad bhagavatam because these are the two scriptures which purely talk of bhakti yoga the bhagavad gita culminates where lord krishna says that sarva dharma parityajya maam ekam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha ishami ma suchaha ma suchaha do not fear so lord krishna is telling if you take shelter in me you will cross over through all the difficulties and i will liberate you from this cycle of birth and death that is what lord krishna is telling in a sense so the gita tells you who krishna is as arjuna says param brahma param dhama pavitram paramam bhavan purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam ajam vibhum he says you are purusham shashvatam divyam you are the you are the end of all <laughs> that's what arjuna says basically so that's uh, the theme of punarvasu so if we read scriptures like the gita especially daily because punarvasu is the nakshatra of repetition so if we repeat reading of the scriptures daily then we also read scriptures like bhagavatam morning one shloka from the gita evening one shloka from the bhagavatam wow it's like a dreamland <laughs> and then whenever we have time in the weekends we can visit our guru we can visit centers where we find spiritual nourishment and after that when we have holidays we can visit holy places why holy places because jupiter gets exalted in these nakshatras punarvasu and pushya they are the best of the best of the best the crest jewel of all the nakshatras yes so there is no better time than now to visit holy places to connect with the gurus and to do things on a daily basis so decide yourself whatever you want to do start from january to september do it on a regular basis the next thing that you need to do is 
whatever you do or whatever you continue doing you need to share that with others also so suppose you are an astrologer for example and you have some good techniques your experience on how you predict uh, certain events that's one example i am giving you or you have some great knowledge which you would like to share then you share that because whatever you do during punarvasu will come back to you so if you share things then it will come back to you 10 times more and if you want to give donations or give anything any helping hand to anybody this is the perfect time so when you do that then you will realize that eventually there is a lot of auspiciousness which has come to your life because if you give out auspiciousness auspiciousness will come back to your life so it's give and take you see give and take policy which is very famous these days so we give but we do not expect that we get anything back in return we do we should not expect that but at least it is our free will to give things to give resources to people and now you may say that oh i do not have finances i cannot give donation that's perfectly fine you can just uh, give a helping hand to your guru to your guru maharaj you can just ask him that is there any way i can help you that would be a great service because rishabh dev says to the most esteemed of his sons bharat maharaj he says tapo divyam putra kayena satvam and he also says that the service to the great souls mahatmas they open the doors to liberation mahat sevanam api dwara vimukteshu mukti the doors to liberation from birth and death that opens all right so if you want to cultivate more spiritual wisdom this is the best time if you want to learn any new course suppose in your job there is the requirement that you need this skill which you had once upon a time but now you will need to develop it again then you can do that then any relative which uh, you used to contact once upon a time but for many years many days you have not contacted maybe now is the time when you could contact them all right any anything which you have spoiled earlier anything which you have destroyed now is the time you remake it because now when you try to remake it you will find the ways and whatever you do during this time you need to have a humble heart because cancer is the sign of humility where we surrender ourselves capricorn is a sign where mars gets exalted where we feel yes we will do it <laughs> and cancer says you can do but still you need god you see so cancer doesn't deny you of actions but cancer says that there's something higher there's a higher arrangement so all the jupiterian traits are present at its pinnacle in this nakshatra okay so utilize this time this is a fantastic time because now you will be able to see things more clearly because you will understand that there were some areas where i needed to do some homework but i did not do it but now is the time that you will have to do it that will depend on wherever your uh, cancer and gemini is falling in your chart okay so that is what i will say and there can be instances where suppose you have venus in punarvasu there can be instances where if you were in a relationship with somebody that person can come back to you your ex boyfriend or your ex girlfriend or your husband or you were divorced with somebody if your seventh lord is in punarvasu that can happen if your ninth lord is in punarvasu then it can happen that uh, people who you, you used to take guidance some of your gurus they can come back if jupiter is in punarvasu that can also happen and if your 11th lord is in punarvasu some of your contacts earlier with whom you used to meet they can come back and depending on the nature of the planet and the lordships and the dasha which you are running and the strength of your birth chart and the ascendant lord and all other factors it will depend on all of these what punarvasu how punarvasu reveals itself through rahu all right but whatever happens you have to understand that this is a very karmic time of finishing things which i started once upon a time and i left it so rahu is all about karma which one nakshatra rahu is transiting all the karmic implications come out related to that nakshatra okay so now if anything comes out which uh, you did not want to that can also come back so if there is anything which you feel that you need to reveal then do it before january 3rd all right and i am not creating fear here but if you have 
done something wrong or you ha had done something wrong to somebody then it is advisable that and especially if the connection to the 8th house is there or the 12th house in your chart in the current dasha then it's advisable that we go and tell the person or that organization that look look i did this i did that so that's it i'm surrendering so then later on we may not uh, be held responsible or we may be given a kind of punishment which is acceptable but if we do not do that then it can happen that we were trying to hide something and that thing comes back and then later we are lamenting all right so that's what i would say do spiritual practices morning gita mantras and evening one shloka from the bhagavatam and visit holy places in holidays visit spiritual centers in the weekends and give spiritual knowledge give helping hand to others give donations and try to fix something which you had damaged once upon a time okay and if somebody wants to fix something with you then don't deny them <laughs> if you deny them then somebody else will deny your request all right and if you want to fix something with somebody and they deny your request don't worry they will come back one day all right so there you go wonderful time it is for doing spiritual practices whatever you do now will set the trend for rahu's 18 year long transit back to punarvasu again okay so until next time wish you good luck bye bye and if you're new then please like comment share and subscribe and what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and yes if you need some help specific to this transit of how this will play out in your case then you can always go to my website to book a reading you will find the link down below okay until next time bye bye see you